and we're with our final guest for this evening, Mr. Sutcliffe Hart, leader of the Dove Party. And we'll dive right in with the questions, you know the format, and I guess we're ready to go. Sure. First one, what specific plan do you have or what changes would you make to the current arrangement with the water corporations to provide an abundant, reliable, and affordable so supply of water? Yes, I think water is the number one challenge facing Angola right now. I, I think that many people across the island are suffering from a lack of water. And this is due to the fact that the plant at Crocus Bay is no longer operational. As a matter of fact, it was dismantled and removed. And we have not been getting rain. And the weather forecast is that we are likely to have a very dry year this year and maybe even next year. And what we also know is that the water table is being depleted because there are many wells that have been uh, being used all across the island. And as a consequence, the, the, the availability of water could be an issue. And I know that the current government, uh, they are in the final stages of negotiating to bring a new uh, operator in to supply water from Crocus mm -hmm. Bay. And hopefully that happens really soon. Uh, but it is my understanding that the infrastructure, the line infrastructure all across the island is in a serious state of disrepair because when it was installed initially, uh, it was not done at a very high standard and it's leaking. They're losing anywhere between 30 and 40 percent of the water. Uh, water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, but going forward, what we find extremely exciting is the opportunity to process seawater into potable water, or water that you can drink, mm -hmm. um, using wind and solar technology. Mm -hmm. The big expense with water right now is the cost of processing it using fossil fuel, that is using electricity mm -hmm. from Anglet. Mm -hmm. But um, if we can actually have that water processed using wind and solar technology, you will find that water price would move from around six cents per gallon down to one cent a gallon, which means that we can have an abundance of water. You will have a beautiful lawn at your house, and you will have lot, you'll be able to bathe all day yeah. for probably about a dollar or two. Well, so, so uh, um, how would we use the wind and the solar power? Like, what what technologies are you bringing in to convert using those technologies? Oh well, the thing is, wind and solar energy is being it is the new buzzword around the world. The wind turn. A mm -hmm. turbine, mm -hmm. which turns a generator, which produces electricity. Uh, the, the, the solar panels, uh, they absorb the sunlight mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the photovoltaic um, cells, yes. and they convert that mm -hmm. into electricity. So, I mean, that technology is being used. No, I widely. guess my, a be, my, my a better question would be, wh what technologies will you be bringing here? What plan do you have? What, how, how are you going to use this, this technology that you're speaking of to create water for us oh oh yeah well well we're gonna create electricity mm -hmm. and electricity will be used to turn the, mm -hmm. the systems that will convert seawater okay into nice. into potable water water mm -hmm. that you can drink okay, okay I mean that's the way the plant in Crocus Bay was working before yeah it's a it's a reverse osmosis process mm -hmm. basically what happens is salt water is pushed through a semi permeable membrane yes and the salt crystals stay back and the, 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 the other particles of water is forced <coughs> through this mm -hmm. membrane and that is the water without the salt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, but I think this would require a lot of funding, so how do you think we'll get it done? We don't really well, have the funds at the well, moment. Well, I think the government has made an arrangement mm -hmm. already with a supplier, is my understanding, suppliers out of Antigua, that will actually put the plant in Crocus Bay. Mm -hmm. With respect to renewable energy, Renewable energy is such an exciting opportunity and project for us that the technology is so inexpensive relative to the, the actual electricity output that we would realize savings of around 70 or 80 percent mm. by using that technology. Hey. It, it is sort of like, it's sort of like you going to the bank. If I was to lease a car from you and I was going to pay you $2,000 a month for the car and you can go to the bank and borrow money to buy that car and your car payment is $500 a month, means that you are making $1,500 a month profit. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of benefits we're gonna get from, from, from solar technology because the cost of financing it relative to the rate that you would charge consumers, the cost of, uh, 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 of the loan will be very low relative to the money you can make from that technology. 
Yeah. So are you speaking of? I've heard of um, people getting a solar panel and actually uh, making more energy than their household uses, and they put that energy back into the grid. Is that yeah. what kind of system you're well, speaking of? Well, it's it, well the the idea of putting energy back into the grid that is taking it a step further. Okay. You can have a standalone plant. Okay. With respect to how we can do the water at Crocus Bay, mm -hmm. but our vision for electricity in Anguilla is that we are to move in mass. In other words, convert the entire source of electricity away from fossil fuel mm -hmm. to solar and wind technology. Mm -hmm. And we will just keep the generators, like what Anglic has right now, for standby. That is, maybe at night, yeah. or when the wind, the wind cuts at night, for example, okay. or there's huge demand for electricity, like during Carnival. But we will, for most part, used solar mm -hmm. and wind energy to run the operation all the time. There's another technology that is worth probably mentioning here. It, it is actually, uh, it's called solar thermal, that also has some potential that gives, gives us the ability to store energy. And if that can, 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 can prove uh, profitable and viable, mm -hmm. it ought to be looked at as well. Have you, have you um, spoken to Jabri Lewis? We actually interviewed Jabri yeah. on our show. Right. Jabri designed a, uh, a wave turbine to go in Anguilla waters. This right. is why he got into MIT, actually. Yes. Um, do you know about young people in Anguilla doing stuff like that? I, I mean, it's designed specifically for Anguilla. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, not a, I'm not aware of it, but I'm aware of the type of technology that could work using wave energy. Because yes. wave energy has an enormous potential. Well, you, you also speak in your, um, the, the, yes, your the priority, yes. the short, um, you speak of priority, um, a priority in expanding um, the exploitation, which I don't necessarily like the word exploitation, yeah, sure. but, right. but yeah, it, it's, it's true, exploitation of 200 nautical miles of yes. sea. Well, what about with those turbines, have you considered? Well, no, I mean, I, I have not. I think, I think that um, I'm fairly conservative. And, and I, like, I like working with, with proven technology that is cost effective. Uh, the idea of us considering other ways of, 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 of maybe sourcing energy mm -hmm. is something that, that can be considered going forward. Mm -hmm. But I think we ought to do like what is happening in the, in the world with respect to the thrust in renewable energy and what we do know is that uh, most countries around the world are focusing their resources right now on wind and, and solar technology. But I would say not to the exclusion of other emerging technologies that can prove more reliable going forward. We ought to be open-minded and we ought to be responsible. Okay. Okay, um, I would like to move on a bit from that topic sure. ju due to the time that we have. Um, how does an assisted living program diversify the economy, lower taxes, and help job growth? That's an excellent question, mm -hmm. actually. Do you understand the assisted living program? Please, no. please. Okay. please the like assisted that. living program is a program that is actually becoming very, very commonplace in, in Europe and in North America. Because people tend to be living better, living longer, and, 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 and relatively healthier. Mm -hmm. So here is a situation where you have people in their 70s, 80s, who um, they are not sick to the point where they need to be hospitalized, but they're not well enough to live alone. So they have someone who would live with them. That's why you call it assisted living. So imagine someone who is 80 years old. They might be suffering a little bit from dementia. So they're losing their brain a little bit. So they put stuff down. They don't remember where they put it. So that person needs to have somebody living with them. Mm -hmm. But that person, unfortunately, can be a relative because maybe the person's husband or wife has died and their children are grown and they're living elsewhere. They have their own lives. But they don't want to have their parents live in a, a home mm -hmm. and just vegetate. Okay. They want them to have a semblance of a normal life. So this person would live in a home by themselves, but they have people who will come and be with them all the time. It's called geriatric care. Mm -hmm. That is caring for the elderly. Yes. So imagine someone who will go to their to, to this person's home at 7 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and they might work a 12-hour shift, so 7 in the morning till 7 p.m., and you are there assisting them, making sure they get their medication, making sure that when they go to bed that they are assisted in getting the clothes off on, they don't slip in the bathroom, mm -hmm. that if they are using a wheelchair, that you help them to get in and out of the wheelchair, mm -hmm. okay. help them to get in and out of the bed, and maybe onto a couch or something in the living room so they can watch TV. Mm -hmm. You help them to go grocery shopping, so you will... You might drive their car mm -hmm. and take them grocery shopping, mm -hmm. and you get paid between 10 
and let's say fifteen twenty dollars US an hour okay. for doing this. Now well. here's a situation: a lot of our people working in the hotels are working for five or six dollars an hour. Can you imagine a situation where we bring something like this in Angola, mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden we have a whole number of people in Angola want to move away from working in the hotel industry and work in these jobs is, is this really decent living my question is is this industry a private industry or a government for industry it, is it good question uh, for most part the these folks are being insurance companies actually pay for the service okay and these people aren't coming to live in a communal environment they're gonna have their own home mm -hmm. they might lease a house in England mm -hmm. yeah they might buy a place and you will come and work for them at their place you're not a maid you not them up the floor you're not here to cook if that's going to be done, that can be done by a maid, which mm -hmm. is separate and apart. Mm -hmm. My daughter happens to do this in, in Florida right now. Okay. That's one of the things that attracted us to it, by her explaining how it works. And she was really, really excited about, about this. There are some people who make as much as $50 an hour doing this, depending on whether mm -hmm. or not the person they're taking care of is so uh, need more attention, need more care. How I, I'm concerned with how a young person, such as your daughter, mm -hmm. but a young person in Anguilla, mm -hmm. such as your daughter, like would make 50 US or 20 US or 15 US an hour. Is it possible? How is that possible? It's very possible because uh, these people need to have someone with them all the time and, 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 and they have good insurance and, and these folks are paid because you, it's not just anybody who will do it. You have to go through a training program. Mm -hmm. And at the present time, the, the um, Anguilla Community College has a training program called geriatric care program mm -hmm. it's a geriatric care program where where people can be trained into into how to take care of mm -hmm. the elderly okay. yeah so it's called a specialized training okay um are, are you comfortable with that response yeah okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it is happening in florida it is happening we in florida were, it's happening across across I, europe as well i Very good i know what you're talking about we uh because yes the world is <laughs> Let's just move on. Actually, the world is we have a we have a follow up question. We should yes. move on. Good, sure, please. Okay. Um, can you describe what curriculum growth is necessary in the schools to prepare them for emerging job markets? Your party has planned to develop like this assisted living program. Yeah. Yes. Well, the thing is, um, first of all, what's important in our school system is that we focus on core curriculum, mm -hmm. and that is. We have got to be very careful in Angola not to have our young people feel like they are, they are, they are, they are graduates from, from, from high school and they don't have the basic skills. So we've got to hone in on basic skills. Basic skills of computation. In other words, we want to see our, our, our children pass mathematics because it's about application. Mm -hmm. In your everyday living, you need to be able to use mathematics. Mm -hmm. In your everyday functioning, you need to be able to read, understand what you read and a level of analysis so we think it's important to zero in on those core skills but beyond that it's important that we skill up our young people for available jobs or emerging jobs or forecasted jobs yeah mm -hmm. so that you have people who are fit for purpose mm -hmm. it makes no sense for us to train up a whole bunch of people to i don't know right. to, to to for art yeah. if we don't have jobs that they can actually go mm -hmm. there and, and tap into. There's nothing more frustrating for young people than to consider themselves to be ably qualified but then can't find a job That's because true. they don't have the skill sets. Cool. So, so we got to have people who are skilled up for purpose, with a specific purpose in mind, and not just training for training's sake. So have you, has your party identified emerging job markets? Have you identified the, the top growing jobs, let's just say in the world, not even in Anguilla, I know it's yes. kind of hard to find statistics in the world. As far as I'm concerned, I've seen in the next five years projected job, job growth in terms of digital media and digital type jobs is mm. tremendous. Is up, is, I, I don't even know the exact, it's far greater than any mathematical job or anything. Though we do need those things, the job growth is not necessarily in that sector. My question to you is, we don't necessarily read things anymore as young people. Yeah from you spin we don't read like that sure. we watch videos we sure. do digital media sure. so are you answering to, are you really truly answering to what is happening in the world for young people and where the jobs are and where we're looking for jobs or are you trying to answer to something else 
I and which I understand as well, going through school and no, and knowing about mm-hmm. you know the whole college I'm, I'm, thing. I'm, I'm a realist. Uh, I'm a realist in that um, we have to uh, focus in on what skills and opportunities are here, while we uh, try to encourage our young people to be highly entrepreneurial. Mm-hmm. Um, if you if you if you cast your eyes down on number the number nine point there, you will see that. Um, we are focused in on the need mm-hmm. for our young yeah. people to be highly entrepreneurial. Mm-hmm. I have a nephew who has a corporation. He's a CEO of a corporation in California called Google Tunes. Mm-hmm. Multi-million dollar company. Mm-hmm. He started it. Mm-hmm. And what he does is that he goes out and buys, he buys games and stuff that is targeted to children, mm-hmm. safe videos. And he's marketing this stuff all around the world to large corporations and is making a small fortune to it, doing it. I mean, you can go in and, and, and um, Google him. I think I, I think I knew him actually. Stephen, Stephen Hodge? Stephen, yes. Stephen Hodge, that's, that's my, my nephew. And he has started this company. So no, I'm not gonna at all restrict um, the, the, the opportunities to what's going on in Anguilla. The world is your oyster. Mm-hmm. And you as young people, you are living at a time when, when you have limitless opportunities which have become available because of the technology that you're mm-hmm. playing around with. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we have to keep your feet from the planet on the ground because some of those desires to be highly entrepreneurial and make millions and millions of dollars might not be realized. So, so we're saying always have a backup plan as to how you're going to survive mm-hmm. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. while you explore those great ideas. And I think when, you're, when, when one is young, you you, you, you you fantasize being this super, super rich person and super, super successful person. But it's always good to have a fallback plan. Yes. So co-curriculum and then have some an, an, an alternate uh, means whereby you can survive while pursuing your real dream. Okay. Yes. Okay, well, um, just a follow-up question. Sure. Can you name the current youth entrepreneur initiatives? How will your party plan to support them? Or change them, perhaps. Can I? Can I? Can, it can you the name them? Can you name them? The, the, the what is currently being? You know, like how we talked oh. about digital media being the it thing for most yes. entrepreneurs now. Mm-hmm. Can you name any in our country that your party plans to support or well, perhaps change? Well, you know, it, it's interesting. I mean, many years ago, many years ago, I, I used to write software in the United States, California, mm-hmm. and I really see those kinds of skills as being critical skills. I, I think that it's important that youngsters learn logic. Mm-hmm. It's important to, 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 to learn logic. If you learn logic, it puts you in a good position if you want to talk about writing applications, you know, applications for yourself. Yeah. In Anguilla, things are limited, but there's a lot of potential in music. And I know of, of a number of people who've done extremely well in the areas of music. Mm-hmm. So I think those are things that people ought to focus on that can really give you the breakthrough. If we limit entrepreneurial ideas to Anguilla, this place, we don't have critical mass, we don't have a consumer market. It is really, really difficult. So so, so if you're looking at real entrepreneurial opportunities, you really ought to look outside of Anguilla. You really ought to look outside of Anguilla for the most part if you're going to be really successful and be progressive. I must ask, have you heard of the Get Set program? Absolutely gets it. Yes. Okay. Well, th- um, I was just curious if you, so, if if you were, if your party is, what your party's plan is in terms of supporting, changing, get set, getting involved with that program, because that's what we're talking about in terms of youth development. That's yeah. exactly what we're talking about. If I had a copy of my um, a bulletin that I put out last year, mm-hmm. the idea of the get set program and the entrepreneurial program, I believe, was lifted out of my my little manifesto for last year. Mm -hmm. The gentleman who came in here from Dominica, who were training young people in in, in entrepreneurship, that whole thing was lifted out of a document that I did. Pastor Philip and I, I'm sure you know Pastor Philip, we um, sat down about six years ago, and one of the things that we wanted to do was to uh, start a program whereby we would identify someone who wanted to build a house, and then we were gonna go to the bank with this person, and have a contractor commit to working with young people and train them in all phases of construction under the supervision of a contractor with a, with a, with a special arrangement, hope you understand what I'm saying, with a special mm, arrangement yeah. with a homeowner and the bank and use that as a training program to teach youngsters how to plumb, how to build houses, because at the end of the day, let's face it, 
construction is going to be a core industry in Angola. Yes. It yeah? A lot so, of places. So, so, using, so using, using a program like that, and this was way before some of these, you have the buzzwords for it, but it was, a, it was a, a, an internship entrepreneurial program to skill people up in disciplines like plumbing mm -hmm. and electrical work and construction generally uh, using that type of concept. Okay. Yes. And and the whole issue of funding, the whole issue of funding, we believe that there is a need to have seed money available, but um, we have to be careful to ensure that money is focused uh, in the right way. Yeah, because it can be abused. Oh, yeah. Th that was actually my next question. Yes. Because I've noticed that in reading the manifesto that your party's initiative seems to ask for a lot of funding, and we know there has to be seed money. Mm -hmm. But with the reduction of taxes, mm -hmm. how does your party plan on making up these resources? No, because no, we no. have to start somewhere. No, 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 no. Make sure. Can you repeat the question? I want to make sure I understand the question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your party's initiative seems to ask for lots of funding, mm -hmm. and with a reduction of taxes, mm -hmm. where, or rather, how does mm -hmm. your party plan on making up the resources? I mean, where will we get the funding from? Yes. Okay. I'm not sure if, if this plan calls for, 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 for a lot of funding. Um, if we can just go through it quickly. Um, providing water in abundance. Mm -hmm. uh, the government, I believe, they have a, not believe, they have a contract with someone who is actually going to put that infrastructure in place. Mm -hmm. um, with respect to uh, renewable energy, that, again, um, it sells itself in that it might require, it might require, let's say, $100 million U.S., we today are spending $60 million a year, EC dollars that is, mm -hmm. buying diesel for Carito. So that's about 25, well, 25 million uh, US dollars. And which means that in eight years, we can actually pay back for the, the, um, the renewable energy infrastructure. So, so while, while you say you're going to need a lot of money, really? that money is easily provided by a lending institution because of the, the savings that one gets. But we're still by not considering to to the sustainability of the project and continued maintenance, so we're gonna, just going to leave the infrastructure deteriorate or okay. not. It's gonna con it, we're going to have to go and have people trained to go in. And I assume, th I assume we're probably going to have to bring in technical people from outside to train our people yeah. first. What this, what this technology does... It allows for... I understand. No, no, let me just explain, please. Uh, what this technology does, uh, the panels they have a life of 25 years. There are no moving parts. And yes, we'll train people up to maintain them. But there's no moving parts. It's like putting, a, like putting on a, a, a panel on the outside of this window. How often do you change this window? The window will stay there forever. You, mm -hmm. It's hardly any maintenance. The panel is essentially going to sit at an angle and it stays there, no moving parts. You might have to go there and maybe spray the parts that might corrode and rust every once in a while, and the terminals that's there, you know, ongoing maintenance, but it's not like you need huge experts to do it. There are people here, Tommy Hodge, I believe, built a plant for, for one of the hotels here. I think it's a five megawatt plant, mm -hmm. and it's up, it's working. Mm -hmm. And um, there'll be maintenance, but it might require two or three people who will walk through it and spray it from corrosion and check the terminals every once in a while. So it's not huge maintenance and it's not rocket science. Uh, you can install a solar panel yourself. You can actually build a solar panel yourself. Mm -hmm. You really can. If you go on, if you go on YouTube, you can, see, you can see them being built and you can br bring sure. all the elements here Very and true. you can build a solar panel yourself. Very true. YouTube is yes. the greatest library in the world. Yes. That's true. If yeah. anybody was wondering. Uh, <laughs> no, that's true. Okay, now move on. Um, what else do we have on here? The um, well, you tell me. Economy. The okay. Let's look at this. Um, the assisted living program. Yes, we, we talked about, about that. Yes. Um, you're saying insurance companies. Have we? Are we sure that insurance companies are going to do it? Are we sure that we have the the elderly that have the the insurance coverage to do that? Yeah. Well, you know, my daughter gets paid today and she's being paid from insurance company, all we're saying is we got to attract these folks to live in Anguilla. To live in Anguilla. Yeah. Okay. And, and continue those No, that's programs. a little bit clearer. You didn't, I, didn't, I didn't understand that earlier. Oh, you thought that Attracting Angola, people. You thought yeah. Anguilla was going to fly from here to, to walk in the States to do it? Or, or yeah, the folks I didn't come here to live. Yeah, come here to they'll live. They'll come here to live, yeah. They'll come here to live, and they'll work here, and insurance companies will pay so the folks to work. Where do, where do you okay in terms of in terms of actually finding residents for that 
for that program because I think that's a great program for young people. Yeah, I think it's a great, it's a great program, program for young people and older where, people. Where are we gonna fly? Um, where are we gonna bring? For, I actually have two major problems with this. Actually, okay, that's fine. Let's talk about the healthcare here. Why, how are we gonna attract elderly people to come to Anguilla? Mm. To come to a healthcare system that is not at, at anywhere a standard where yeah. most people that f- have healthcare here or, or people that have money here actually fly away for their healthcare. So how are we gonna attract people of elderly? Um, living in, uh, so in that's, living that's, circumstances that's actually, come it's, here. It's a brilliant question. Brilliant question. It turned out that before we committed to this, we spoke to some of the medical doctors. Yeah. And they loved the idea because geriatric care is a special type of care. And there are some doctors here who would love to have this as part of their business. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. If, if, if you were living in a rural part of Florida, rural part of New York, and you had a medical problem, mm-hmm. how would you get to a major hospital? Mm-hmm. How would you get there? Um... As I drive, I'd have to drive. Okay, well, chances are you won't drive. If, you, if you, I was older, yeah. no, anybody. Anybody. You, if you got sick, you'll be medevac. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. medical evacuation. True. Yeah. So if we had uh, a situation where someone got sick in Angola, and they have, you know, that company called Massa, mm-hmm. a company like Massa will have a jet in here, and about, you know, probably about twenty minutes from BVI or St. Thomas, mm-hmm. and they will fly that person. If there's an emergency, they'll mm-hmm. fly them to Puerto Rico. They'll fly them to Miami if these be. Medivac, because if you're living in the states, as much as you think that you know, if you got sick, you can just go down the street to a hospital. It doesn't happen that way. I lived in America for many years. If you got sick and you have a critical issue, they will get you in an air ambulance and they'll fly you maybe 100, 200 miles away to a specialist hospital. So that's what you do if you have a, a major emergency. Fortunately, very few of us have major emergencies in our lives. Mm-hmm. Very few of us. So mm-hmm. for the few people who have for the few people who have um, major emergencies, you, they're medevaced out for health care uh, throughout the region, throughout the world. So that's not a really a big issue, but we have uh, medical doctors in Anguilla mm-hmm. who are ready and, and able and, 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 and certainly willing to, to support such a program. Okay. So in a sense, yes. this assisted living program would be a diversification of our tourism product then because in order to get the people here, you'd have to advertise it some way. It might end up being some sort of benefit to the tourism product. What do you think? Well, I'm not sure for the benefit of the tourism product. It's a different type of, of, of an industry because you, what you're doing is you're inviting people to live here as opposed to visit here. Mm-hmm. When one thinks about tourism, we, thinks, uh, we think of someone who's going to come here for a limited time and they'll leave. But with assisted living, it is a, a situation where someone chooses to make Anguilla their home. And we have a number of people who are, who are elderly, who are living in Anguilla, they've been living in Anguilla for many years. I don't think we call them tourists. We call them, we call, we call them residents, we call them expats. Those are the kind of names we associate with those people who mm. live here. My main, my main thing was, how do you market Anguilla mm-hmm. as a place for people to come down here to live? If they're at that stage, I, I, I'm trying to get it rewarded. At that point, way. at that point, well, uh, at that point, I think you're, you're marketing Anguilla as a place for people to come in. Die, uh, on, like that I'm ease pro- ease out of life, and at that point, that's what it feels like. Well, I'll well, tell you what, maybe just the opposite. Let me tell you something. What happens um, if it, have you been to Florida? Yeah. Okay. What happens in Florida is that during around October, every year, a whole lot of people leave the Northeast of the United yeah. States, mm-hmm. and they move down there for the warmer climate. And you know when they're there because they drive around with their their indicator is flashing. You know, and they're driving straight for miles and miles. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> these folks, these folks move there, and the primary reason why they're there is to enjoy the warm climate. And you find a lot of people come to Anguilla as well, and they bring their parents with them around around Christmas time um, to enjoy the warmth. And there are people who want to live in Anguilla because it's warm year round. And even Florida gets cold, your joints hurt. Mm-hmm. And people want to live in tropical climate. So they're not coming here to die. They're coming here to live, to get more from their life than they're getting from where they are living in cold climates. So don't look at it as a negative thing. It's a very okay. positive thing. Very, very positive thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If, if, you, if you had a 95-year-old grandmother and she was living, let's say, in England, and she was to come down here, and you can push her in her wheelchair Somewhere where if she can see the ocean and the sun, she'd love it. Mm-hmm. Love it. And that's what we're saying. Let people come here and enjoy the freshness of the mm-hmm. air, 
the bright sunshine, the warmth all the time. And if they want to be cool, they can just go back inside in the shade and get the tropical breeze blowing through the house. And that's what we, that's what, that's the appeal. And a lot of people, very successful people, bring their parents down here to vacation all the time. That's true. Yes. Um, I think we have to wrap up right now. Uh, we're right at time close. So it's a shame that we didn't get through to a lot of the other I, things that we have I'm there. I'm telling you, we have a lot. There's a ton of stuff on here yes. to go over. Yes. Um, so uh, just give us our, our final comments, you know. Um, are you looking forward to the, the, the next week? Uh, well, I'm not looking forward to next week. What I'm looking forward to is to be in a position to really help to transform Angola. I think this island has a lot of potential, and there could be a bright future for the youth of this country, but you need to have the right leadership in place. Leadership with vision, leadership with a passion, leadership that understands the challenges that's facing young people. Because I'd like to see you, when you reach age 25, 30, thinking about having your own house, having your own car, and thinking about having a family. So you have a husband or a wife, and you have your children, etc. But in the current environment that we have, mm -hmm. there are not many young people under 40 years old who I think can be able to have a house in Angola. Mm -hmm. And it's scary. Mm -hmm. There is not much of a future. And I'm concerned about this. But we are committed through the initiatives of the Dove Party to do this. And I am personally committed to seeing the young people of this country have real hope, have real opportunities going okay. forward. And I think that's the best way to say it. And thank you for having, for being here, Mr. Hodge, and thank enjoy this me. little interview. And all the best of luck on Wednesday. Well, I don't good need luck. luck. I just need success. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. All right. Thank All you. the best, guys. Have, Have a good, good one. Be good. Thank you. All right. That's good. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate it. I'm off to a public meeting now. You right. can. Yeah. Don't let us hold you back. And I'm going to bark, bark, bark. Don't bite. Yeah, don't bite. Don't bite. <laughs> All right, All right. Man. Good. 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 Have Thank a good you. night. Good. Well, it off, like off, off.